What's going on YouTube? Josh here checking in, back with another episode of the Research Review Series. Today we're actually going to be looking at an article that just came out just the other day, and this is coming from JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association, so a pretty big name journal. And the title of the article is called, Presence of Banned Drugs in Dietary Supplements Following FDA Recall. Now this is a pretty simple study, so it won't take too long to go through all the details. So basically what the researchers did in this study is they looked at the FDA data for dietary supplements that were banned as a result of containing pharmaceutical grade uh, substances within them. And they looked at these, these dietary supplements that were banned from January 1st of 2009 up through December 31st, 2012. Then what the researchers did is between July and August of 2013, so that's at least six months after the end of this period of ban, the researchers bought these supplements that are on the ban list. And they didn't buy them in the black market. They bought them at you know, regular retailers, uh, brick and mortar stores, online retailers, places where anybody else can buy them. Then what they did is they basically sent off these, su these supplements to a private lab and a, a third party to do an analysis to see if these supplements contained any kind of bad substance. The results of the study might seem kind of surprising. Of the, the dietary supplements that they sent off, two thirds came back positive for containing one or more of these pharmaceutical grade banned substances. Of the dietary supplements that they looked at, which was a total of 27, 17 of them, which is about 63%, contained the same adulterant or that same um, basically compound that was mixed in a pharmaceutical grade that was identified by the FDA, but six of the 27 or just over 20% contained one or more additional substance that wasn't even caught by the FDA. So if you look at the, the table of the pharmaceutical adulterants that were in these supplements, there was a wide variety of kinds of adulterants that were identified by the FDA. So um, many of them were anabolic steroids or steroid-like analogs, meaning that they're very structurally similar to known anabolic steroids. Uh, there were several of these that were actually, that actually contained a pharmaceutical grade anorexant um, known as Symbutramine that was basically marketed for weight loss. But due to some issues in testing, it was actually shown to have increases in cardiovascular risk, uh, meaning increases in heart attack and stroke in some individuals who have already a high risk. So if they were high risk for, for heart attack or stroke, this drug actually increased that. Uh, there was also, in many of these substances, they found sildenafil and other compounds similar to that. If you're not familiar with that, it's basically uh, similar to Viagra. So those kinds of things were in some of these dietary supplements. Now granted, those kinds of dietary supplements tended to be the dietary supplements that are promoted to improve sexual um, performance or sexual enhancement, so to speak. But nonetheless, those are pharmaceutical grade things that were in dietary supplements. Well, even one of these supplements contained an SSRI, which is a, basically the medications that are prescribed for depression. Uh, and that was a, you know, that's a pharmaceutical medication and some of that substance was identified within these dietary supplements. So what is the take home from the study? You know, basically this is kind of alarming, right? The FDA is obviously not really in the business of regulating dietary supplements too much. Their primary form of regulation is for drugs. That's their purpose. But of course they do get involved a bit with regulating uh, dietary supplements, specifically when there are issues like this, when they're being adulterated with pharmaceutical ingredients or uh, whether, when there's you know, a significant concern for the health of the public. So the fact of the matter is that the FDA made a ban on these various supplements, yet they were still available for sale. And the regulation of this ban was obviously not undertaken very well. And then not to mention on top of that, the FDA missed a bunch of adulterants. There were other things that, you know, they didn't even catch when they did their initial testing. So, you know, what do we take from this? Basically, the supplement industry is not regulated. The regulation that we have is not very effective. 
so you know when you are using supplements it's to your interest to your best interest to get supplements that are you know maybe well known from a good company uh, that are basically approved by third parties I mentioned this before in another video that I meant I talked about in protein spiking uh, I would recommend getting supplements that are objectively certified by a third party like NSF or uh, I think it's CMP um, those are third parties that basically certify that what is in the, the product is actually what's in the product and you're not getting any other kind of stuff mixed in or laced in or however you want to call it um, so that's basically it if you guys like the video uh, be sure to give it a like if you're not a subscriber already hit that subscribe button if you guys have any questions about this uh, be sure to post them below and also again as always with the research review if you guys would like me to review any studies uh, be sure to comment below as well. I'll catch you guys in the next video.